Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pond, the chemistry guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2020 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 27. Now Question 27, the use of the data booklet is relevant to this question. A hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is shown. So the setup is here. In which direction do the electrons flow in the external circuit? And which E-value should be used for the oxygen electrode? So if I consider my options A, B, C, D, the direction of electron flow is either from electrode X to Y or vice versa, then the E value of the oxygen electrode, it is between 0 0.40 volt and 1.23 volt. So if I look at this hydrogen oxygen fuel cell setup, you notice on the left hand side, what we have is hydrogen gas goes in and water comes out. And on the right hand side, O2 gas goes in and water also comes out because we'll only have one outlet here involving the products. And the electrolyte in this case will be one mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide equals. So this is in alkaline medium. So do take note of that. The presence of your NaOH electrolyte tells me that this is in alkaline medium. Now the topic tested in this exercise, clearly it is on electrochem. So let us run through some ideas or some concepts involving hydrogen oxygen fuel cell which is explicitly mentioned in syllabus, huh? so therefore we have to be familiar with that. So idea number one, involving hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, we know that it is essentially the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to give me water. And based on this idea, very simple idea, I can determine which electrode is the anode, which undergoes oxidation, which electrode is the cathode that undergoes reduction. Because based on the change in oxidation state, I know that your hydrogen is oxidized, from H2 to water, increase in oxidation state from 0 to plus 1. And oxygen is reduced from oxygen element to minus 2 oxidation state in water, so O2 undergoes reduction. What this would mean is the electrode at the side of the hydrogen will be the oxidation electrode, that will be the anode, and the charge for my anode for an electrochemical cell will be negatively charged. So I know that the electrode at the hydrogen side will be the negative electrode. Now, on the other hand, if I consider my oxygen, because oxygen undergoes a reduction, and therefore the electrode at the side of your oxygen will be the cathode. And for electrochemical cell, the cathode will be positively charged. So all this we can actually do by deduction. We don't really need to memorize this. So coming back to the direction of electron flow, as mentioned previously, we have already determined the electrode at the hydrogen side will be the anode, which is negatively charged. So therefore, X will be negatively charged, and the electrode at the side of O2 will be the cathode, which is positively charged. So therefore, Y, which is at the side of my O2, will be positively charged. And when I attach these two electrodes together through an external circuit, then we would expect of course, uh, the electron flow from the negative electrode to the positive electrode. So electrons should flow from X to Y. So we have settled the first portion involving direction of electron flow. Electrons should flow from X to Y. Now the next thing we have to do is to consider the magnitude, the E0 value for my oxygen electrode. Is it 0.4 volt or is it 1.23 volt? And we have to consider since oxygen undergoes reduction, and therefore when I try to find the half equation involving O2 in the data booklet, your O2 should appear on the left hand side of the half equation. Because in the data booklet, all the half equations are written in reduction form. In the forward direction is reduction. So all the species on the left hand side undergoes reduction. And if I know that O2 undergoes reduction, when I refer to the data booklet, I only need to look out for O2 on the left hand side of the half equation. So the four half equations involving O2 on the left hand side, actually they are all here. I've listed all of them and maybe we want to go through the concept. What are the things that we want to consider so that I can choose the relevant half equation. Now keeping in mind, we know that the electrolyte is sodium hydroxide and therefore this is in alkaline medium. So when we choose the half equation, we would want to use the half equation where OH- is present. If there's the presence of H+, then you suggest that it is in acidic medium. If there is OH- present in the half equation, then you suggest that this is in 
alkaline medium. So we will want to keep this in mind. Okay, let us run through each of these ideas and each of these half equation. The first half equation where the E value is plus 1.23 volt, this is the reduction of your O2 to water. And since there's H plus present, then we will use this if the electrolyte is acidic. But in this case, since the electrolyte is sodium hydroxide, then we will not use this half equation. How about the second half equation where the E value is 0 0.40 volt? Now, if the E value is plus 0 0.40 volt, this half equation is for your O2 reduced to your OH minus. Now, you notice your OH minus because of the presence of them. This one is more suitable for this question because the electrolyte is alkaline. So we will use this half equation for the reduction of O2 to OH- in alkaline medium. And you notice the oxidation state for oxygen in both of your product involving water for the first half equation, involving OH- for the second half equation. Oxidation state for oxygen in both cases, it is a minus 2 oxidation state, which is more common involving oxygen. So therefore, we know that minus 2 oxidation state a common and stable oxidation state for oxygen. And when I consider the reduction of O2, usually we will choose between product being water or product being OH minus, which is leading us to the next two half equation. Because you notice for the next two half equation, I still have O2 on the left hand side, but the product on the right hand side, it is hydrogen peroxide. Oxidation state for oxygen, it is a minus one. Involving equation number four, O2 on the left hand side, then the product HO2 minus, if you work out the oxidation state for oxygen, in HO2 minus, it is also a minus one. Now, minus one oxidation state, it is not a common oxidation state for oxygen, because oxygen usually it is either zero as an element or minus two in most of the other compounds. So, when we have a minus one oxidation state involving oxygen, we know that it is not common because it is not stable. So, we can actually make use of that. If it is a stable oxidation state with respect to a particular element, then we will see this more often and therefore it will be more common. So the more common it is involving an oxidation state, then the more stable that oxidation state for that element. Correct? So when I consider minus one oxidation state for oxygen, since it is not common, in fact, in syllabus, we probably can think of only hydrogen peroxide as the example, where oxidation state for oxygen, it is a minus one. and O2 will not spontaneously undergo reduction to give me hydrogen peroxide and HO2 minus. In fact, we would use this half equation involving the reverse direction, the oxidation of hydrogen peroxide to give me O2 or the oxidation of your HO2 minus to give me O2. Then we will make use of this two half equation involving the third half equation and the fourth half equation. So when I consider reduction of O2, we will only consider these two half equations plus 1.23 volt and plus 0 0.40 volt. The difference will be in the medium. Acidic medium, I will use the first one. Alkaline medium, I will use the second one. So for this exercise, I should be using this plus 0 0.40 volt. So we essentially have talked about both ideas. We have already determined direction of electron flow should be from X to Y. Then we have also determined the E value for the oxygen electrode should be 0 0.40 volt. So if I run through the options A, B, C, D, of course the answer to this exercise will be option A. Alright, so that was the discussion involving this question. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.